I think what's happened. Okay, like I said in the last donation, I'm gonna pick up on Kirstie Alley's comment. She knows she stuck her foot in her mouth, so I'm not gonna keep kicking that dead horse. And no, I'm not trying to call Kirstie Alley a horse or suggest that she tried to eat her own foot in a snack attack. But I am going to comment about what she said because a lot of people think like her. So in that sense, I'm speaking to all those who share the sentiments she expressed. And this kind of goes out to all white people. Y'all are gonna have to assume some of the responsibility for racism. Not because it's all your fault, as I doubt any of you have ever owned slaves. And no, I don't think y'all get to benefit from slavery either. Because if y'all did, blacks in Africa would be doing fantastic right now for selling other blacks into slavery in the first place. But let me put it like this, especially the whites who consider themselves Christian. Jesus was sacrificed for what wasn't his fault. He was born with a cross to bear. He was born with a problem to deal with, a problem that wasn't his fault. But he manned up and he dealt with it. And he's not through dealing with it. He started the process as a slaughtered lamb and will end it as a slaughtering lion. But my main point is that white people, you can't escape this. And the more you try, the worse it gets. And many whites have tried to escape this through two main methods. There's the self-effacing method, like what Kirstie Alley represented, and the dismissive method. And they can typically align on specific sides of the political and ideological spectrum. The self-effacing method of escaping typically lies with liberals and Democrats. The white liberal will try to exonerate themselves by indicting all white people to gain acceptance from the wronged, and with that, exempt themselves from the wrath of the wronged. This is cowardly and shallow, because many of the wronged were initially wronged by each other in the first place. Many of the Kushite Africans were sold into slavery, not only by other Kushite Africans, but Muslims too, a religion that American Kushites try to say is the black man's religion, even though Islam is an Arabian-rooted religion, not a Nubian-rooted religion. And what's funny is that Muslims, just like Democrats, have a morbid history of Kushite enslavement, yet both are largely embraced by the black community. Weird, ain't it? Blacks commit more violent crimes against each other more than any other ethnic group in America and celebrate the gangster thug image, and these offenders are embraced as being authentically black in the black community. Weird, ain't it? So the self-effacing white liberals wants other people to recognize them as better than other white people. They want to be recognized as the good kind of white people. But the thing you white liberals fail to see is that you still think you're better than someone else. You're always trying to be better than someone else. It's one thing to be competitive and being better at demonstrating your skills and character and always trying to improve yourself. But you white liberals just simply think you're better people. That's the thing, and this ain't just me. Malcolm X felt the same way about you. And while you white liberals celebrate what you grossly misunderstand about Malcolm X, you're so full of yourselves that you can't even comprehend the fact that he couldn't stand you. I'm sure if Malcolm X were alive today, he would be deeply saddened by the death of Trayvon, angered even. However, I'm sure even Malcolm X wouldn't have to put on his glasses to see that George Zimmerman isn't white, and that George Zimmerman is a Democrat a party Malcolm X had deep contempt for. And Malcolm X would be floored to see how people are trying to make Zimmerman out to be white just so they can have a race war for the Democrat party to reap spoils over. And he would be blood vomiting disgusted over this so-called new Black Panther party because the same mentality of this new Black Panther party is the same kind of mindset that murdered Malcolm X. Now, I don't agree with everything Malcolm X thought any more than I agree with everything Ronald Reagan thought. But I agree with enough to have great respect for both. But anyway, white people, you can't escape racism. It's going to have to be fought. And you got to be careful to not let the race baiters frustrate you into fighting against races instead of fighting against racism. To whites who are dismissive about racism, who are typically conservative, you make the mistake of thinking that we should just ignore them. And you also make the mistake of thinking that we conservatives who are black can say the things that you can't. Not exactly. They hate us just as much as they hate you, if not more so. But we try because not all are hardwired liberal. 
Many of us conservative blacks were liberal, but we heard the truth and it didn't matter what ethnicity it came from. But being that we've had the experience of being liberal and that we are blacks who have grown up in Afrocentric environments, I would say it is a very good idea to consult with us so that we can have a better united front in fighting racism and race baiting, which is a very big impedance to us promoting conservatism for a better united America. And the issue with the Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman case is going to be a political weapon employed by the Democrat Party to impede our efforts. But yes, consult with us. Don't rely on us to say the things that you think you can't say. Like I said, many of them see us as traitors, so they hate us. But to the ones who aren't fully consumed by the dark side, they'll listen to a white person too. But consult with us so you know how to communicate and relate without pandering and patronizing like liberals do. Dig into some Thomas Sowell and Walter E. Williams to get some solid insight on economics so you can say, look around you and edify them as to what dynamics have led to their economic discontent. And from there, you get a foundation that speaks across all color lines and cultures. Of course, you're going to have people who will reject you outright, but you'll be more fortified to have more success with others. People have been led to believe that economics is the main concern and is at the root of all their woes, but really have a profound misunderstanding of what contributes to it and often demand policies that exacerbate the problem. Smiley talks about profiling and contempt. Tavis, have you ever heard of gangster rap? Have you ever been to the hood? Either you haven't and you don't know what you're talking about or you have and your deep case of denial keeps you from knowing what you're talking about. Does Tavis not hear the contempt blacks have for each other in their lyrics? In the hood, they don't even waste time profiling. That's why it's called drive-by shooting, not profiling and shooting. But Tavis thinks this can be fixed by removing guns. Uh, you can remove the guns. You won't have removed the contempt that they have for each other. The issue is much deeper than guns. But of course, Tavis has a denial that makes him spin like a tornado and logic gets whisked away like Toto off to the land of Oz. Tavis is a voice for the mob mentality. He's a suit wearing representative of those who took to the streets and assaulted people like Christian Hartsock. The Democrat Party is still not only a mobocracy, it's a lynch mobocracy. People who vote Democrat vote for a party that was so bad about lynching people that Republicans and the NAACP teamed up to institute anti-lynching laws. And now here it is, the NAACP is loyal to the Democrat Party, the party of the lynch mob, and the Democrat fetish for lynching is rearing its ugly head again, as many of y'all want to send a lynch mob after George Zimmerman. And I know some short-sighted people will say, Zo, you shouldn't be making this a Republican or Democrat issue. You damn right I'm making this a Republican or Democrat issue because this is how we reduce the possibility of turning it into a general black versus white war. If the black community is going to be angry at white people, you might want to let them know which white people they should be angry at. And the black community has plenty to be angry about with the Democrat Party. It'll be like turning the werewolves against their vampiric masters. But really, I'm not looking for the black community to turn their anger on white Democrats in violence. I ask simply that you walk away from them and stop relying on their promises that keep you from knowing true prosperity. Their ideas keep you pitted against each other as well as against other Americans. Change this and you will gain the self-respect and the respect of others that you seem to so desperately want. And you won't have the complex of insisting that a person was shot just because he was black. Not when you know good and well that too many blacks pull the trigger on each other. When blacks stop doing that to each other and blacks stop making excuses for each other like Tavis Smiley does, then they'll stop feeling like everybody's profiling them. Oh, but I forgot. To do that would be selling out. You feel that all of America should just accept and trust you no matter how you act or no matter what image you project. And that's a sad, selfish, and childish position to hold on to, y'all. I'm Alfonso Rachel with Zonation, and we see Trayvon's death as a tragedy. But let's point out that the tragedy is being continued in the form of using him to rage a race war for Democrat supremacy. Or suggest that she tried to eat her own foot in a snack attack.
Republic. I like the sound of the word. It means people can live free, talk free, go or come, buy or sell, be drunk or sober, however they choose. Some words give you a feeling. Republic is one of those words that makes me tight in the throat. Same tightness a man gets when his baby takes his first step or his first baby shaves and makes his first sound like a man. Some words can give you a feeling that make your heart warm. Republic is one of those words. Let me go. 